Are you getting enough rest? That's the question we asked Dr. Stephen Lane at the Sleep Center here at East Jefferson General Hospital. Why is it even important that we're talking about sleep disorders? Well, you're spending roughly one-third of your life asleep, so it's a key part of our life, and it has certain restorative aspects. Uh, too little sleep can have an adverse effect on your health, multiple areas, cardiac, endocrine, so it's just a wide array of issues that we can see associated with too little sleep or disrupted sleep. What is a sleep disorder? There's a whole multitude of issues that we can see. Sleep apnea is probably the most common thing that we see, and that's where people will have difficulty maintaining an open airway. They actually obstruct their airway and are choking themselves during the night. Typically, the bed partner is going to complain of loud snoring. I can't sleep. I've been referred to you. Right. What happens when I get off that elevator and come see you guys? Depending on what the issue is, we'll then determine whether or not a sleep study is indicated. If it is, we'll decide whether or not we can utilize a home sleep study versus an in-lab sleep study. Nice thing with home sleep studies is that it's a lot easier for the patient in that you're sleeping in your own bed, and although it's not totally normal because you have this device, you take it home, you put it on when you go to bed, you take it off when you get up in the morning, and and you just bring it back in and we take a look at it. It's very effective in diagnosing sleep apnea, not effective for any other sleep disorder. If we suspect narcolepsy or REM behavior disorder, then we would probably do an in-lab sleep study. So if you're not feeling yourself in the morning and you're not quite awake, just might be time for a sleep study. I'm Camille Whitworth. Thanks for watching.